overflows. Life evolving out of life. Neither is Buddha life denying, nor is Tantra life affirmative. The source is the same. Buddha focuses on death, Tantra focuses on life, and both are one. So, wherever you want to start from, start. But go so deeply that you come to know the other as well. Evolving out of the seed of life, one day you are born, thus life comes into existence. Life, love and light are three dimensions of the process of living. Life is the beginning. Through birth, journey of life begins. You can use such opportunity in useless pursuit leading towards death or take such opportunity for transformation and attaining life eternal. That which is never born and never dies. It is just the beginning. Love comes into life as unseen but realized truth. Love alone is God and also godly. Love comes as awareness and as wisdom. Love helps to live life in harmony, synergistic harmony with the entire creation, sentient, insentient, stars, the moon, the sun. You learn to take from existence only that which is necessary for you. You are living in and out of your essential nature, living out of your innocence. Life of harmony, showering bliss each finite moment through each circumstance and situation, rivers towards life eternal. Life of harmony, Showering bliss each finite moment through each circumstance or situation rivers towards life eternal. One day this harmony and oneness explodes into light, this light that, that thus explodes is the aura of life eternal. You attain to that which is beyond both life and death. Then life flows between two shores of life and death as bliss and harmony. Dawn of awakening surrounds you as the aura of enlightenment. The journey is long and the path is arduous. However, when you are within the energy field of an awakened one, the journey gains momentum and your path becomes easy. You start seeing and experiencing as if miracles are happening in your life. Continue the process. Life will be blessing and bliss will shower as myriad flowers. Season of spring has arrived. I have explained Buddha's approach that appears life negative now let us understand another approach, the Tantra approach. Tantra appears life affirmative, but that again is our interpretation. Neither is Buddha life denying, nor is Tantra life affirmative. The source is the same. Buddha focuses on death, Tantra focuses on life and both are one. So wherever you want to start your journey, start. But go so deeply that you come to know the other as well. Buddha focuses on the end. Verily, death seems to be the end. Tantra focuses on the beginning and life begins with birth. 
that is why Buddha seems to be too much in love with death and Tantra seems to be too much in love with sex, love and body. Life begins through sex, life is maintained through love and life blossoms as life eternal. In the end there is death and in the beginning there is sex because Tantra focuses itself on the beginning, sex becomes very important. So how to go deep and know what sex is, how to reveal the mystery of love, how to penetrate into the beginning, into the seed, so that you can go beyond and blossom into a beautiful flower that is Tantra's approach. Buddha focuses on death and he says to meditate deeply on death, move into it and know the whole reality of it. Both are two ends of the same thing. Sex is death at the deepest core. The two dissolve into one another. The death is very sexual, deep cosmic experience. You dissolve into the cosmic womb. It will be difficult to understand with your present conditioning. Why do I say that sex is death? There are many insects which die with their first intercourse. The first sex act and death occurs. There is a species of a spider in Africa in which the male dies in copulation. He does not come down from the copulation he is just on the female and he dies there. The first copulation becomes death and it is very terrible. At the moment of ejaculation he dies. Actually he is not even really dead. He is still in the pangs of death. The moment the spider, the male one, ejaculates, death starts and the female starts eating him. He never dismounts. The female starts eating him and by the time the sexual act is finished, he is half eaten. Sex and death are so interconnected with one another. Because of this, man becomes afraid of sex. Those who want to live more, those who are fascinated with long life, they will be always afraid of sex and those who think that they can become immortal, celibacy will be their natural way. One has, no one has yet been immortal and no one can be because you are born out of sex. If you are born out of celibacy, only then that could be possible. If your father and mother were celibates, then only could you be immortal. But then how can birth take place? Sex has already entered in life with your birth. Therefore, it is always good to begin at the beginning. You are already born and death is far away. Birth has already happened. You can work on it more deeply. Death has to happen still. It is still in the imagination it is not reality to you as yet. 
And when you see someone die, you never see death. You see someone dying, never the death. Death is the flowering of life. Death is the flowering of life. While dying is the process which happens inside, you cannot see it. It is invisible. Remember, dying is individual process and the individual himself cannot say anything because the moment he goes through the process, he is no more. He cannot come back. He cannot step back and tell what has happened. However, certain enlightened ones or mystics have given the first hand experience of life when leaving the body and he enters into the infinite domain of death. Enough for now.